Aloha everyone, Lisa here with Upside Down Pilates and Nourishment and today we are going to talk about the vaginal microbiome. I'm really excited about this. This is one of the pieces of information that I've personally been wanting to know more information about for many, many years now, and a lot of the scientific literature is coming out, and we can learn more about it. Um, we can also test for it, so I'm going to talk a little bit about that today as well. So let's me move this over here, and if you have questions, comments, or concerns, put them in the chat, and I will get back with you um, at the end here, unless I see something in between that we should talk about while I'm talking. So, uh, yeah, what is the vaginal microbiome? What is a healthy vaginal microbiome? What is an unhealthy vaginal microbiome? Uh, what are symptoms of an unhealthy vaginal microbiome? What disrupts the vaginal microbiome? Uh, does candida overgrowth create infertility and other vaginal microbiome disruptions. These are all different things that we're gonna talk about today, all right? So if you're interested in information like this, go ahead and subscribe and hit that little bell. You can also find me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, probably somewhere else that I didn't think of. Oh, oh, Spectrum OC16 uh, is our TV show in Honolulu if you're on the island uh, or in the islands, you can watch it across there. So those are other places that you can find me and connect with me other than here. Okay, so let's start with what is the vaginal microbiome? So something that's important for us to realize is that we are a holobiome. What does that mean? Our body is its own ecosystem. So in all of our body, there's uh, Parasites, bacteria, fun, fungi, yeasts, uh, worms, viruses, all of these things really live in and on our body and they do things to help us live. So they're very beneficial and they have important jobs. Uh, each part of our body has its own special ecosystem. And so the vaginal microbiome is the ecosystem of the vagina. And again, it's going to contain parasites, bacteria, fungi, yeasts, and possibly worms and viruses. Um, I'm not aware of testing for those yet, but they're everywhere else. So I'm going to assume that they're there as well. Okay. What are some of the disruptions or imbalances of the vaginal microbiome um, what are they associated with? So when you have a disruption in the vaginal microbiome or an imbalance in the vaginal microbiome, what types of things are they associated with? So in a woman's lifetime, most of them will be diagnosed, officially diagnosed uh, with some sort of condition. Shinobi is up here again talking with us with some sort of condition um, associated with a dysfunctional or a disrupted vaginal microbiome. Those are things like bacterial vaginosis, um, urinary tract infections, yeast infections, um, pelvic inflammatory disease, uh, pregnancy complications. So that's going to be things like miscarriage, stillbirth, and other things that go on in pregnancy that don't turn out well. Um, fertility issues, so that's going to be things like infertility, not being able to get pregnant, along with things like uh, PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, and uh, endometriosis, amongst other things that go on. Um, STDs, sexually transmitted diseases, gynecological cancers, and toxic shock syndrome. All right, these things are all associated with a disrupted vaginal microbiome. So bacterial vaginosis is the most common vaginal condition in women ages 15 to 44. And in the United States, it's about 21.2 million women, about 29.2% of the women um, have bacterial vaginosis. 
some more, I got some statistics here for you. Um, urinary tract infections are the most common outpatient infection with a lifetime incidence of 50 to 60% in adult women. That's a lot that we have going on there. Yeast infections, 75% of women are likely to have at least one yeast infection during their lifetime. Um, but nearly half have had two or more. Wow. That's a lot, you guys. All right. Okay, so now the part that I'm most excited about here is we know now, well, scientists, microbiologists, people have been looking into and studying the gut microbiome, <laughs> but now they are looking into the vaginal microbiome. And we're going to look at now what is a healthy vaginal microbiome, what's inside of a healthy vaginal microbiome. So in the gut microbiome, we want to have a lot of diversity, um, just a bunch of different types of organisms and things creating a diverse an ecosystem in our gut microbiome. But that's the opposite with the vaginal microbiome. In the vaginal microbiome, you want it you do not want it to contain a lot of diversity. Diversity in your vaginal microbiome is associated with um, a disruption in the vaginal microbiome. A healthy um, vaginal microbiome contains a lot of lactobacillus. So it is primary lac primarily lactobacillus. Um, and in a gut microbiome, there may not be a lot of lactobacillus. So in a healthy gut microbiome, there may not be a lot of lactobacillus. So it's a little bit different. And um, lactobacillus lowers the pH through the production of something called lactate. And this does make sense because the vaginal microbiome operates at a bit of a lower pH than the gut microbiome. So it contains a high abundance of lactobacillus species. The foremost dominant lactobacillus species found in the vaginal microbiome um, are lactobacillus crispatus, and I am going to butcher these pronunciations, lactogasseri, lactobacillus jensenii, and lactobacillus inners. Um, now, the lactobacillus inners, it says, may be associated with dysbiosis, but it is a normal flora, okay? So that, that's what's been figured out so far. Those are the things that are in there and that are should be in there. We should have plenty of lactobacillus. Now, how does lactobacillus contribute to a healthy vaginal microbiome? So what does the lactobacillus do that... Um, keeps the environment healthy. So one thing that it does is it lowers pathogen abundance by producing lactate that I said earlier, which lowers the pH level, and then something else called bacterocidins and hydrogen peroxide. And so we know what hydrogen peroxide does is it will kill off things we don't want to have in there, but bacterocidins um, they are toxins produced by bacteria to inhibit the growth of similar um, bacterial strains to the lactobacillus. So you've got three things in there that are working hard to keep bad bugs out of the vaginal microbiome. So let's say you didn't have the lactobacillus, you wouldn't have those three things in there working hard to do that, all right? The other thing, another thing that lactobacillus does is it inhibits the adherence of pathogens. So that's um, get adherence of pathogens to the uterus, to the vagina, keeping things in there. Um, they inhibit the adherence of those passion pathogens by producing something called biosurfacants. And those compete with the attachment sites. So the biosurfacants will go onto the lining of the uterus and then not let other things attach there. And then, or by something called coaggregation with the pathogen. So it kind of makes like a biofilm, which is like a, a invisible cloak. All right. So when it adheres to the pathogens, 
those two things together will make an invisible cloak. And the biosurfacants and the coaggregation with the pathogens will allow the pathogens to be whoosh, swept right out through the hosts or your body fluid, all right? So the following species, uh, the biosurfacants inhibit these species, which some of them we've talked about. Candida albicans. So that was our talk last week. So if you don't have lactobacillus creating these biosurfacants, you may have an overgrowth of candida albicans and that candida albicans, like we talked about last week, will literally dig roots into your tissues and then it was really hard to get rid of. Staphylococcus aureus, we're going to talk about that in a moment. Strep Streptococcus mutans, E. coli, Pseudonomus, I don't know how to say this one, Argoniosa. If you know how to say any of these, feel free to correct me in the comments. And Salmonella typhimurium, or something like that. So all of those things are um, not allowed to live in the vaginal microbiome if you have plenty of lactobacillus. If you do not have plenty of lactobacillus, um, those things may be living there and they shouldn't be living there. So I wanted to share with you a little bit about my story. I'm going to try not to cry while I do this. But as we talked about before, I believe it was last week or maybe the week before, I found out that baby with baby Noah um, in his autopsy report that I had to ask Four, which my ob had never actually seen the full copy of, that there was an infection. And the infection was Staphylococcus aureus. So that is one of the normal body bacterias that should not be living in the vagina, which if you are low in lactobacillus, may start living there because the biosurfacants aren't there to make sure that it doesn't live there. So, um, after I found that out, I um, asked, I had a functional medicine doctor and then also my ob -gyne. I did two different tests to see what the composition of my vaginal flora was. And the tests are not that great. Um, this, you can just be swabbed at your doctor um, and that's what she did. And, you know, they're looking for STDs and that type of thing. And... Nothing uh, that should have been a problem actually came up. The only thing that came up was that um, I didn't have any lactobacillus. And that didn't seem to alarm anyone at the time. And now we know that if you don't have any lactobacillus, there is definitely some other stuff going on in there that shouldn't be going on in there. So... That is my story of those are the things that I knew before I had this information to share with you. That was, oh my gosh, nine years ago now? Yeah, it's got to be at least nine years ago now that I figured all of that out. So again, I figured all of this out, started asking questions, and what I came down to was, well, I should have lactobacillus, and there's no lactobacillus there, and um, so something else must be there. And the autopsy report did show Staph aureus. Um, now, I do think there was probably club sale and ammonia in there um, because that was the only thing that I could come up with in my gut microbiome lab test that I found that was associated with stillbirth. So, um, but it doesn't mean that it wasn't in the vaginal microbiome. It just means it didn't show up on the test. I made it through without crying. So that is my story of understanding all this stuff before science understood all of this stuff. Now, the other thing I want to remind you of is after I did that heavy metal detox, which uh, you can go and watch that whole video learning about that, um, the candida was raging all over my body. And that is what I am dealing with now which is why I've essentially been bedridden for about six months now. So we know that um, I had a very, very, very bad candida albicans infection. 
So not only was there for sure staff, but also Candida, um, you know, we know that it's there. It's, this is not an imaginary thing that's going on. So these things are very much real causing miscarriages and dead babies. And that's what happened to me. What's calming about it for me is that I know, and I'm not going to cry, but most women never understand why their baby died. They're just told, oh, you've had miscarriages. Oh, you can't get pregnant. Oh, your baby's dead, but we don't really know why. And um, we can tell now. It's, it's very clear to be able to see these things. Okay, so let's talk about just real quick, a reminder, and I've talked about this before, what's something that's going to kill our lactobacillus? One thing that I know for sure kills a lactobacillus is amoxicillin. That's an antibiotic, and that's the pink stuff. I don't know if anyone who is my age or younger didn't have 8 million rounds of the pink stuff growing up as a child, because that's the go-to antibiotic if you have any sort of a sniffle. Well, it kills lactobacillus, and if you don't have any lactobacillus, you might have a dead baby. That could be a problem. The other thing that we know kills lactobacillus is glyphosate. So glyphosate is in Roundup. We know it causes cancer, but it also kills lactobacillus as well as biobifidobacter. So there you go. Those are two things that you probably want to avoid. And if you've had those things in your life, you want to get rid of them ASAP. So what am I going to do about this? Right now, I am going to take the new vaginal health kit test. It's a functional, uh, functional lab test so that you can see what the composition of your vaginal flora is. So I'm going to take that and see what's in there now, see what comes up. I know this test is way better than anything that I've ever had offered to me before. And I'm going to take that at the same time as the functional gut microbiome analysis. Both of these tests are by Microbiome Labs, and I'm really excited to take them together and see uh, what comes back, see how things have changed, and see how far off from healthy I am now. All right. Now, where are we at here? Let's see. Here's some other things that happen with low abundance of the lactobacillus. Low, let's see, low abundance of lactobacillus species allows for an increase, like I said just a moment ago, which is what happened to me, an increase in opportunistic and pathogenic microbes. And I'm going to butcher these, but here's what we have, such as Gardenella vaginalis, Provitella bivia, possibly, Atopobium vaginae and Mycoplasma hominis. Those create dysbiosis that are indicative of bacterial vaginosis. So if you had bacterial vaginosis and you took this test, those are the types of things that would show up. All right. And or if you don't know what it is, vag bacterial vaginosis is a type of vaginal inflammation that's caused by an overgrowth of naturally found um, bacteria in the vagina, but it upsets the balance and then there's a problem. Uh, women in their reproductive years are most likely to get bacterial vaginosis, but it can affect uh, women of any age. Okay, so now we're going to go into uh, what impacts the health of the vaginal microbiome negatively. So these are the things that can change your microbiome for the worse, okay, or for the negative effect of having issues. All right, age. So it's going to be different. Puberty, menopause, pregnancy, the vaginal microbiome, is it's all different, um, and different things happen at different times in your cycle as well. Sexual habits. So Sex with a new partner is linked to increased bacterial diversity. And then remember, we don't want a bacterial diversity in our vaginal microbiome. So the more sexual partners you've had, what science is showing, 
is that the more diversity you have in your vaginal microbiome. Medication. All right. These are things like contraceptives, hormone replacement, and antibiotics. Those things are showing to be negatively impacting the vaginal microbiome. Use of vaginal products, things like lubricants and cleaning products. So uh, leave your vagina alone. <laughs> uh, the vagina is a self-cleansing organ. So it's showing that the use of vaginal cleaning products and tools disrupt the vaginal microbiome's normal balance, and they've been associated with that bacterial vaginosis. All right. Diet. So things like vitamin A, C, D, E, beta carotene, calcium, zinc, selenium, those things are all associated with a healthy vaginal microbiome. High vitamin A, C, and E are associated with decreased vaginal uh, vaginosis. A high glycemic load is also linked to a higher incidence of vaginal bacterial uh, vaginosis. Sorry, bacterial vaginosis. I flipped it. And then flavonoids uh, protect the urinary system from infections. So those are all dietary things that um, you can change if you need to, to help your vaginal microbiome balance, which is the one of the great things. And we're going to talk more about these things next week. But so a diet without those things um, and a diet with a high glycemic load is going to be a problem for your vaginal bacteria. Okay, there's more. Stress. So stress kills even your baby. All right, cortisol, or it can create <laughs> infertility. I have seen this a million times. Stress, people start relaxing and whoop, they're pregnant. It's pretty amazing. Anyways, what does stress do? So cortisol will lead to vaginal dryness and um, how it does it is it does it by reducing the estradiol. So that's your estrogen, okay? Uh, and the, the biosynthesis in the ovary of the estradiol. Now, um, the dryness then will impact also the pH, the balance of the acid and your happy, healthy environment um, in your vagina and your ut uterus most likely. And that will definitely impact your cycle. It's going to impact whether you can get pregnant or not. Um, so those are two other things that you can think about when you're stressing yourself out that maybe you need to calm down a little bit. All right. And remember, we're going to talk about this in a few weeks, but there's not just external stress, but there's internal stress. So internal stressors are going to be like, imbalanced blood sugar, pathogen overgrowth, um, hormone disruption, uh, overload of toxicity, clogged liver, your body just not working properly. Um, all of those things become internal stressors and um, that's going to affect what's going on in the flora of your vaginal microbiome. And the last one in the list is tobacco use. Like anything else, it will screw up your vaginal microbiome. All right, so the vaginal microbiome is easily disrupted by all of those factors that I just list, listed off. What we're going to do next week is we're going to go through how the gut microbiome impacts the vaginal microbiome. So what you want to remember at that point, since the gut microbiome is going to impact what's going on in the vaginal microbiome. Anything that's going to disrupt the gut microbiome is then going to disrupt the vaginal microbiome. So those are things like glyphosate that I already mentioned, proton pump inhibitors, and your diet. That's going to, whatever's going on in the gut is going to end up affect what's going on in the vaginal microbiome. And we'll talk more about that next week. All right. Let us see where are we at now. So what are the symptoms of an imbalanced vaginal microbiome? Let me review them. I mentioned them earlier. Bacterial vaginosis, urinary tract infections, yeast infections, pelvic inflammatory disease, 
pregnancy complications. That's the miscarriage, stillbirth, and then other things that go on. Fertility issues, that's going to be infertility, PCOS, endometriosis, sexually transmitted diseases, gynecological cancers, and toxic shock syndrome. So those are all symptoms of an imbalanced vaginal microbiome. So if you have one of those things and you want to see what the composition of your vaginal microbiome is, you can click a little link and it'll take you to where you can learn more about getting a vaginal health kit where you can actually go ahead and um, I will send you the kit. You will send the kit to the, you'll swab your vagina, then send the kit to the lab, and then the lab will send me the report, and I will share with you what we found, and then different ways that you can balance that vaginal microbiome. And that would be through diet, lifestyle, supplement types of recommendations, not medication. So I think that's really exciting. And um, any of you who have had, you know, miscarriage, stillbirth, or can't get pregnant, this is just an amazing tool that we have now to search further and see what's going on. Um, and it answered my question, my 10, you know, my nine, 10 year old dead baby question of what's going on. Like it's very clear. This information is very clear. I haven't done the test yet, but the information that I'm getting of what they can test in the test is enough for me to already know what put my heart to, rest at least a little bit. Okay, so what are we going to do next week? Next week, we are going to look, like I said, at the vaginal microbiome part two, and we're going to look at the gut vaginal microbiome crosstalk and see how they work together. We are going to also learn five different types of groups or community state types. So the scientists have clustered different um, types of vaginal microbiomes into groups and it will say what's most healthy, what's least healthy, what's really not healthy at all. All right. And then we're going to start looking at some different lifestyle recommend uh, diet and lifestyle recommendations to help you balance your vaginal microbiome. So that will be next week Thursday right here, same time, same place. So if that interests you um, to get that test uh, grab your kit in the link below, or well, grab the information on how to get the kit in the link below. Um, what you'll do is you'll put your email in and then I'll send you information back on how to get started with that. Um, yeah, and I really, if this is you know calling to your heart, I really encourage you to do it and see what's going on in there. Because this is a, it's a new test with just, I'm, can't express how excited I am <laughs> about it. Okay. Lastly, I want to share with you my weekly health update. So if you've been following me, you know I have not been well, and that's why I disappeared, and now I've come back over the past six months. You can go back and watch the other videos. Um, I've kind of been bedridden. Um, slowly I was able to walk more and more at first when I started when I was, well, the reason why I had to stop and go to bed is because my ankles were swelling up larger than my head and my knees were swelling, well, probably my hips and then my knees larger than my um, a grapefruit. It was really quite crazy. I couldn't bend them. It was very difficult to get up and down off the toilet. And walking was, it felt like I was stepping on daggers. So you can go watch the other videos and understand more about why that was. I did a whole bunch of different things to help deal with the situation. Every single tool I had in my tool kit to deal with the situation and it was slowly getting better. But the Mega Micro Balance came back into stock after being gone because of COVID and this is a microbiome lab product that um, has B propolis and your, I forget how to say it. Let me, let me read it for you because it's important that you know. It is, doo -doo -doo. 
undesalenic, I need to look this up how to say it properly, undesalenic acid and bupropolis. And what that does is it goes in and it uproots candida at the roots where it's digging into your tissues. And like we just talked about, this candida can be digging into your gut tissue, but can also be digging, digging into what's going on in your reproductive tract. So it could be in your uterus, your vagina, anything around in there. Um, and honestly, it is been a miracle. <laughs> I started praying for a miracle and guess what showed up? Woo! Anyway, so I kept doing everything that I was doing um, with all my anti-candida protocol and my cleansing and my diet and yada, yada, yada. And as soon as I entered this in, I started to feel the change. And that's what I've been talking about is the change. So where am I at now today? Um, tomorrow will be my second week at the full dose of, or the full, I guess the full, yeah, the full dose of the Mega Micro Balance and then also the full protocol for uh, Candida, getting rid of Candida protocol. Or an, I don't want to say anti-Candida protocol because you can't really completely get rid of it, but knock it down Candida protocol. Um, and I am almost amazed. Like, I don't want to say I can't believe it because I don't want to jinx it, but um, I am a lot better you guys I could feel by the time I started the, after the first week it I was significantly better and tomorrow will be the end so how, I should go back a step I had to start introducing it one capsule at a time one week at a time so it's taken me six weeks to get to the top dose and then this will be two weeks of being at the top dose so that's eight weeks so it's a slow eight week introduction of um, that supplement. Um, so I, I shouldn't say it's been two weeks. It's, it's been eight weeks since I started introducing the supplement. And, um, within the two weeks of the top dose, it really, things have changed very quickly. Um, and so now I can certainly stand longer. I'm still keeping my foot up because if I stand for too long, it, um, it does start to have pressure and pooling, but it's not, I do not feel like I'm stepping on daggers at all. In fact, I feel better. <laughs> Goodness, I feel like I should knock on wood here. I feel better than I did before um, when I was feeling already good, which is why I started the heavy metal detox anyways, because I knew that the metals needed to go. So I feel better than that. I mean, I it's really, it's incredible. Uh, I am amazed and slightly floored. So I don't know when I'm going to be back to 175%, which is what I want um, to be even like, that's my whole point in life at this point is I just want to keep getting healthier and healthier and healthier. Even if I'm already healthy, I'm going to be working to, you know, get as much of the gunk out of my body as possible that our environment uh, puts into it. But it's really, my energy is up. My rash is almost completely gone. So part of what happened is my entire body started to be covered with a candida rash, which is like these little red dots. If you look at the uh, thumbnail for the candida um, video that I did, those are my legs, but it covered my entire body from toe to head. Um, felt like acid was coming out of my skin and I really wanted to die again. I'm glad I did not die. <laughs> and I'm so excited because now I have all this information on how to help you and other people, your loved ones with this type of issue. So it's amazing. I am floored. So I don't know how much longer it's going to take, but um, I can't wait to tell you how much better I feel next week. Um, so am I walking? Or I haven't left my home yet. I'm still homebound, but I will be able to go, I think soon to like take a walk outside. I do sit down by my pool to make sure I get my 45 minutes of sunning a day. Um, but, um, we're getting there. It's a lot better. So thank you for listening. If you're still here. All right. 
So if you're interested in figuring out what's in your vaginal microbiome because you're having issues with whatever kind of issues that would be, you can grab your kit. I will leave a link below. Um, and if you have any questions or anything, leave them in the comments. And then I'm still doing the Joint Pain Eliminator program, so that's down there too. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, like, and do share this with a friend or a loved one if any of them would need this type of information. I think that's it. Yay. Okay. I don't see any comments. Does anyone have any comments? I don't think so. Okay. Thank you so much. I will see you next week. And next week we will learn about the vaginal microbiome, gut microbiome crosstalk, and then we'll start talking about how we, what we can do to fix any imbalance that we may have. All right. Aloha. Have a wonderful rest of your day.